It's time for a shift. This is the shift. Big change, big things in the phase here. Big change, big things in the phase here. Welcome to um, the second season of The Shift. Uh, and, uh, my name is Kobe Kane, and I'll bring this to you each and every week. Uh, you can get it on my YouTube channel at the Bond Media. And also you can get uh, the podcast version of this. So um, I'm in the house, the beautiful house of Mr. and Mrs. Yabua Boateng. I'm sure uh, most of the African American diaspora com uh, uh, diasporans here in Ghana are very familiar with uh, my sister right here, Cicely, because she was on the first season of the shift, and she's back again. And um, we're gonna start the conversation real soon. Uh, she called me randomly, you know, because something had happened. You know, in the local language, we say Kusie Imperia. That means the rat does not come home um, uh, in the afternoon just like that. There should be a reason why. And I have to follow. Welcome, sister, once again. Thank you. How have you been? How have you been? Since the, the last time we, uh, we were online, right. I've been doing okay. You know, we've been hanging in there, going through the post-COVID, you know, recovery right, right, situation. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Um. So with business and work, I, mean, I know you spoke about a couple of things uh, on the last interview, mm -hmm. and I want to know how all those projects yeah. are coming together. Are there any new projects that you've added on? Are mm -hmm. there any any other things that you are looking forward for people to come on board as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. A couple of different projects have come up. <clears throat> I have mentioned before that um, I was having a media group. Right. It's called New African Image Right, Right. And as part of my work with that mm -hmm. group, I have been filming for about 15 years. Okay. Every um, organizer, every revolutionary mm -hmm. uh, that I've either worked with, mm -hmm. met, um, maybe sat in on a lecture, mm -hmm. whenever possible, I have interviewed them. If not me, then my daughter Noe. Right. Um, or another youth. Right. Um, so we are compiling a lot of that tape. And some of it is actual tape. Mm. Mm. That's how old the interviews right, are. Right, right. Um, but we had a chance to uh, interview um, Imani mm -hmm. Na Moja right. from um, the AAPRP okay. and from the uh, PAIGC. Mm. Uh, we had a chance to interview Sam Obai and Anwari Mishu from okay. Tanzania. They're filmmakers, mm -hmm. very, very talented. Uh, we had a in chance to interview them um, in related to a movie that they did about okay. hip hop okay. in Africa. Okay. Um, we interviewed Baba uh, Runako Rashid. Mm -hmm. We interviewed uh, Dr. Uh, Moseko. Uh, Dr. Uh, Peko okay. from the uh, Pan-African Congress out of South Africa. Mm. Um, we just recently interviewed uh, Farida Bedwai, okay. who is uh, you know, top of the line yeah. sister yeah. from Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, I was so inspired, you know, just by sitting down and right. listening to right. her right. perspective. Right. Uh, that was amazing. I have a uh, sister, Ugochi, she's a performing artist, a Nigerian performing right, artist, right. Nigerian American mm -hmm, performing mm -hmm. artist. Um, we, we have tape of her, you know, and she's not just a performing artist, but she's an organizer in her own right. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So we just met. It's, it's been not quite 20 years, mm -hmm. but... It's, it's been a journey. Yeah, yeah. So, You've done great. I yeah, so you. we've compiled uh, Dr. Ani, don't let me forget her. We okay. interviewed her. That was, that was an amazing interview. Mm. Um, Brother Kamosi from Freedom Home Paper Company, right, right. which is a distributor of hundreds of black manufactured products mm. in the United mm. States. Mm. I could keep going on, but I hope you... I hope you guys no, get yeah, the point. It's not, it's not, you know, yeah. I, you've, it's, done, you've done a lot. I mean, yeah. looking at the names that you've mentioned, mm -hmm. they're all uh, in, very in, in, in the slang, we say big dogs. Oh, yeah. yeah, very yeah. Serious. This, this is the people I've been working with. This is the people that, some of whom are my teachers. Right. 
um, I've, I haven't, I was trained before the YouTube era. Mm. So I actually had to sit with Dr. Lila right, Africa. Right, right, I had right. to sit with Baba Hunter right, Adams. Right. I had to sit with these people right, physically. Right, 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 and right. to me, that's a whole different type of vibe if you have that opportunity. So it's not, it's um, not only the conversation, you get the energy too. Right. It comes with it. Right. And whoever I didn't meet, I got a chance to work with people who work directly with them. You know, so I'm always, I've always had my ear to getting first line, first hand information accounts from the people who was there from that famous photo mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. Dr. Uh, Khalid Muhammad had his fist back right. and he was going, I, I, I know the people who were standing around him, mm -hmm. I didn't know him. Right. So I get that perspective and I wanted to bring that out. Um, over the years, what does it mean to you to be an African? Right. What does it mean? What does Pan-Africanism mean, mean to you, if right. anything? You know, so these are some of the things that we've discussed. Right, and right, the right, list right. is long. Uh, it's ongoing. It keeps going. Right, right, so right. we're, um, because of a lot of things that have happened lately, I'm even more re-inspired to, I say, release the tapes. Right. Because I want to go on the record and know, let people know this is who I am. Right. I have 30 years of service and right, commitment. Right, I right. don't you're just done, talk about my things. Right. You did, I do it. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't just show up from out of nowhere. No, 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 no sir. You no, have sir. something to back it up. <laughs> no, yeah, I not love at that. all. Love so we, we are releasing the tapes. Um, and actually, you can check uh, in my social media mm -hmm. to see the dates and mm -hmm. which parts, because we're not going to release all at once. Mm -hmm. Some is going to be part of a documentary, mm -hmm. and then some of the more in-depth um, parts, we will make those available for people to actually get a chance to listen okay. to all yep. of that. We are looking forward yeah. to that. We know it's going to come. So my sister called me to tell me about something that had happened in her home. It didn't happen exactly in the house, but when I say her home, I'm talking about her family and people that she loved. She's here, and I'll let her tell us about the story or tell us about what actually happened. Well, basically, um, you know, we are making some attempts at creating community. Right, yeah. So in that vein, uh, my daughter met some youth okay. from America right. whose families are also here. Right. Love and um, she was invited to one of their uh, birthday parties mm -hmm. last weekend, and she was assaulted there. She was assaulted at the party by uh, a youth. A youth who is from the Today. states. Yes. Okay, from the states. Yeah, from the. Don't. States. I'm not gonna. Don't mention any name for now. Yeah. But I want you to tell us, you know, give a little description of this you. Well, not uh, not physical, but then yeah. circumstance, where well, he's from in the states. Yeah, you know, those kind of things. Well, this family, um, I think they're fairly recent repats. Okay. I mean, I don't think they've been here for five or ten years, maybe one one year or maybe right. two. Right. Right. Um, I am not close with the family. I don't know them, right. but I had met the right. son. Right. Right. Um, thought he was a good kid, mm. seemed like a fun kid, uh, you know, I never really had any reason to think anything negative about right, him. Right, right. Um, my daughter thought highly of him enough to introduce him to her cousins who are closer to his age mm. because he, she's older than him. Right. Um, she thought, oh, these guys are close in age and mm -hmm. their personality is a little similar. Alike, right. So he's somebody that we've introduced to our family. Right, right. Um, Surprisingly, you know, uh, things took, took a very, very nasty turn. Mm -hmm. And not just for the physical thing that happened, but mm -hmm. it was a trust violation. Right, right, right. And my daughter <clears throat> sought to address it personally. Mm -hmm. After the party was over, and the next day she tried to approach uh, the young brother and just basically be like, man, this, this is a violation of my trust as a friend. Let's squash this, you mm, know what I mean? Mm, mm. And he basically, you know, he didn't see that as, he didn't see that he had anything to apologize mm. for, you know what I'm saying? So that's when my daughter brought the issue to me and my husband. Mm. So quite naturally. That's what happened. Yeah. I, I wish, I wish um, uh, No was here to speak for herself, but 
he I will. think she's still she's still dealing with the trauma for now. Yeah. You know, and it, it's a process. It's a it's a process. Yeah. For, you know, to get healed, especially when you go through such an ordeal. So I mean, in the right time, I'll have no uh, Noe uh, herself to talk about what actually happened. Yeah. You know. But then I want you to go in a little deep. You say assault and all that. Was it like he tried to beat her, or what no, did he, he actually didn't. do? He he basically uh, he tried to have sex with her, mm. and she told him no, you know, stop repeatedly. Right. Um, and it took him several of those to actually stop. Mm. So mm. that's that's in a nutshell. I mean. You know, he he was really trying to push up on her, and um, he's admitted to so much to my face. Uh, he's admitted it to her, you know, mm -hmm. but he hasn't apologized or been anywhere near. Uh, it's like he just doesn't get it, mm -hmm. and that's the scary part. So, that's the part that makes us want to talk about this because I feel that if it's just a slap on the wrist or pushed under the rug. He will definitely do that again, right? And maybe he'll right, feel right. even more bold. Right, so we right. really want you have, to you have to put a stop this. to it. And if some of these things are not brought to light, what's going to happen is it might go on for a long time. And if there's a conquer in the society and we don't tackle it, what happens is um, over the time it creates more disputes or disparities between the local people and our brothers and sisters coming home. Now we all understand that the culture, the culture is different, mm -hmm. way of life is different, and all that, and that's why I wanted to put this on the ship mm -hmm. so that people will know some of the things that are going on, so that we can all come together, the unity that we are trying to build, we can all come together and and help address some of these issues mm -hmm. and solve it in the right way. Mm -hmm. But then after the incident, what what steps have you taken? Well, the first thing we wanted to do was get in touch with the family. Yeah, of course. That took a very left turn. Mm. Um, there was some interference with, you know, some of other people, um, and things got kind of physically nasty. So we went. We had a whole incident that ended up in the police station. Police. Yeah. But but I mean in, in situations like this, there are groups like the African American Association. Mm -mm. There are a whole lot of other groups that I, I have seen. I contacted members of the Triple A G. Mm. I contacted members of one or two other organizations. Mm. Um, and those were my initial contacts. Right. And honestly, none of them. They didn't really come step out in front of this and help and and try to. Do uh, solve the issue. Yeah, they did not. I have to say that. Um, honestly, that's 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 an issue. And I I I want to I I want to spend a whole day listing, you know, the people and organizations that I felt was well, just blew this up. So let me just clarify that piece right there. Okay. This is not something we talk about either. Mm -hmm. The the African community in America is just as hush hush about um domestic violence abuse mm. and sexual assault mm. as any other african community mm. we are no different don't ever mistake yourself mm. and that's one thing that i know for right. a fact right. most of the time no one says anything, anything. to mm. anyone when they endure an encounter like what what my daughter has not they just don't talk about it and if you do you can expect to be your abuse to be compounded because the first thing that we do to each other is blame the victim right we love to do that and we love to do that because there is no infrastructure to address or protect is mm. no infrastructure to to address for our issues is no infrastructure to protect us especially as women and, and children there is none even if it happens here in the country and in a Ghanaian is a perpetrator and you go to the police, mm. <laughs> there is no protection for you for as you. a victim. Right, 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 right. It's no different in the United States. That In that aspect, it's no different. If you really look into it, you will see that 
this is very underreported. Mm -hmm. And don't mention the fact that in the States it happens to men a lot too. Mm -hmm. No one wants to talk about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in, in fact, when this happened, as I was calling my friends and people I know to try to weigh in and advise us and help us do this process, two more incidents occurred within this last within ten, same... 10 days all against American sisters but by different men one perpetrator was Ghanaian mm. one was Nigerian, Nigerian. Mm -hmm. and one was born in America but the common factor is us it's all been against us which tells me a lot it tells me a lot so when I say that you know, a lot of times people say, well, you came over here and, you know, that's so good and blah. It's fun and games, but when I say when we have real. skin in mm -hmm. the game, this is what I mean. There's no infrastructure, no mm -hmm. community, no tribunal, nothing African, nothing of any besides these colonial institutions. And yeah. the minute they get involved, they make it worse. Well, um, with that, <laughs> with that um, there are actually certain cultures uh, when you get outside of, especially Accra, um, mm. that actually have tribunals and stuff like that to check right. those people. But we're not. Yeah, but we are not in those spaces. We're not Fanti. We are not Ashanti. We're Did not that Ashanti. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I get it. We, you, you see what I'm saying? No, I understand that. So, so, but still, what I was thinking was, you know, as an association, you're a family. Mm -hmm. The other family is also, right? And, I mean, they should have respected the fact that um, you are all from the same place. Yes. Fighting for the, you know, the battle yes. is not against each other and all. Yes. You know, so I was thinking maybe even before the police got involved in this whole thing. They were this informed thing would first. Okay, okay. So I let me it. just say that. Yeah, but and I think mm -hmm. the lack of um, uh, involvement on the part of the repats community mm -hmm. here, um, I'm not blaming them, mm -hmm. but I'm saying that the fact that they kind of washed their hands of it and was just like, oh, sorry, okay. That's all they offered. They didn't try to get out in front of it. No one called the other family and my family to say, let's sit down together. All that is is really a problem. So nobody called the two factions together to mm -mm. settle? No. Not even the elders or the nope. various associations? Nope. And... No, they left everything to us. And if we didn't have a Ghanaian family, we would have been, been in a nothing. world of trouble. Wow. And I'm serious about that. A world of trouble. If we didn't have a Ghanaian family here that was willing to, to literally put down. themselves mm, on the mm, line mm. to keep my daughter from being mauled completely by mm, the police, mm. we, we I don't know what the conversation was. So the victim was once again uh, charged or something. That's that's the whole point of what I'm saying. But how did that happen? Because there's no because of the fact that our community is so weak mm. and lacks the any type of structure to deal with any problems, made no effort to get in front of this, and because of the fact of sexual crimes being so taboo and hush hush to talk about, mm. the victim gets repeatedly violated mm. it, unless they choose to hold the, uh, in, the original violation to themselves. Mm. So that means as soon as they talk about it, they're blamed. That's the first violation. So nobody wants to talk about it? Well, they'll talk about it, but they blame the victim. So that's the first violation outside of the initial mm. violation. Mm. 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 Then if you go to the police, then that's a that's an ordeal a ordeal because right. you know you gotta pay them, you gotta do this, yeah, you gotta do that, and at the end of it, they too will blame you, mm -hmm. the victim as well. So that's another violation. So in our case, all of that was in, in the motion. It it was almost like if I had a thought about it, I could have predicted it. You know what I mean? But sometimes you face things and you look back in hindsight and you take it apart and you realize, man. Victims are repeatedly violated. Victims of self uh, sexual assaults are repeatedly violated because, you know what I mean? It's just we don't even have the, the, the strength to talk about it, let alone for somebody to say, you know what, let's all sit down 
and, and really deal with this. And then the police come and, you know, they just really made everything worse. Work. Mm. You know, so that's a third violation. So that's that's really, that's, you know, I just want to point that out because we kind of delve, you know, we, we are trauma experts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? True. We trauma experts. We know how it happened, what happened, who for, who did it. Trust me, this sexual assault is a very particular issue um, and it's becoming a very particular issue for American African women born in America who have repatriated here. In the past week, you said how many? Ten days. Yeah, three assault cases yeah. on African American women. Oh, people that I know. Oh, people that you know, yes. personally know. Yes. So that means it goes on even people that you don't know is even it's worse. It's wow. Because I did hear about another case, but I don't know that that sister. Mm. No, what, what was it about? It's a, another another assault? sexual assault. Wow. Where a person tried to. I mean, I, you know, how slow is this person? He literally kept offering her drinks, kept offering her drinks. She was getting a bad vibe. He already had um, did some extra stuff, like kind of stalkish, mm -hmm. you know, to mm -hmm. try to get in contact with her. Uh, it, it was, the whole thing was very creepy. Mm -hmm. And she was able to, to get away from him before things got... And that that brother is from America too. Wow. And the sister's from America too. Um, I've repeatedly been informed about cases of domestic abuse where mm. people who traveled here with their spouses, where the the men they get to Africa and feel too free, I guess, and start beating their women. Start abusing them. Wow. Yeah. This this is a this is a thing it's going on it's going on it's going down and we are literally not coming up to the to the mark of dealing with our shit, for lack of a better word wow you know we are not dealing with this we're not we are not and, and because it's not a simple solution it takes it takes you know it takes yeah. people say it takes a village to raise a child yeah. what's a village yeah it's, a, it's access to water it's access to education is protection, protection yeah. you know the we're not taking responsibility right, right. you know for what it takes, it takes uh leadership and and you know people that the child can mentor from you know commitment yeah that's that's what you know raising the kid like when they say that you take the village to raise the child, so literally the, the meaning of, of the whole context. But all these things that are going on, I, I'm quite baffled. You mentioned something about stalking, and it's very funny because I've, I've personally heard and seen instances where... Man, I, I'm sorry to say that, but I have to just tell the truth about it because I'm disgusted by it. And I, for one, uh, I would like to think I'm on the side of the solution. Mm. I would like to think that I'm on the side of the problem. But believe me, these last incidents have made me question my own self. And as somebody, not it's not just me. My parents as committed members of that mm. community. Mm -hmm. My grandparents as committed members of our community. For me to have that type of reflection at this point, it... You know what I'm saying? I'm broken down to my basic right. basic level yeah. right now. So I don't have nothing but truth and love. Mm. And trust me, one side of my sword is truth and one side is love. And I'm wielding it. Mm. So I'm not going to shy away to say that. Mm. We have some serious, serious problems Problem. that we are dealing with over here. And if we don't get serious about creating the organization and the infrastructure to deal with it, we all gonna be running out of Ghana with our tail between our legs. Everything in my direction have pointed to here for at least 20 years. What is the point? These are the questions I'm asking myself. And I don't wanna stop there. I'm asking everybody else too, what are we doing here? It's just that. What are we doing? Uh, I went to school with some cats. Mm -hmm. um, that um, one or two of them even completed a PhD level. Mm. Do you know they came to Africa and started creating porn films? Porn? Yes, and I'm going to tell you porn. something. I'm going to tell you something. This was over 20 years ago. And when that happened, actually that made me recommit myself to the building of Pan-Africanism because I was disgusted. 
I was disgusted by what they do, what they were doing, what they were representing over here, and what they were getting involved in, and what they were encouraging people here to get involved yeah, in. And the image that they were so, putting out. About. Yes, so I made it my business to be that person who was not like them. You know what I mean? That is something that's always kind of been in, in the back of my mind. How could they? How could they come here and bring that mess? You know, we have a saying, uh, maybe from Mississippi, I don't know. But they say, you, I can do bad by myself. Mm. Meaning that you don't need to come here for right, that. It's enough right, problems right, here. Right, right. So for me, um, I have heard about so many very, very disgusting behaviors that we are over here doing. Okay? Can you mention and, a few? I mean, that's one of them. Mm -hmm. um, taking advantage of young young women Local, and men. Right. Um just land scams land scams oh so you're talking about land scams what else land scams mm -hmm. um just debauchery mm -hmm. you know generally um you know when i first came to this country you didn't even see prostitutes outside mm -hmm. uh now it's going left it, 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 it's too it's too right, it's right, out right. in the open right. and instead of us setting ourselves apart as right. repats Rejoining. Some of us are stepping into it and, and actually encouraging people even more. In fact, I was at a hotel mm. uh, at a meeting mm. and recently saw an a, a older uh, American sister mm. with a younger Ghanaian mm. sister. Mm -hmm. And I'm embarrassed to say that the person that I met with who doesn't live here, who just came here on business and, and left town, literally was like oh do you know them because they're whores mm. wow i'm not asking me and my husband almost our mouth was open like this i said come on man this lady is a respected mm -hmm. member of our community i'm not friends with her but I, you know yeah. how can you say something like that and the man was like look i'm gonna tell you what i've seen he said every night i come down to the lobby for my dinner and a drink. Every night I watch them two go upstairs with different men. And you could, I, you know, both me and my husband both was there. We heard it. We saw everything. And I, when we came, I was devastated. You know, I called some one of my aunties like, you know, I'm not trying to judge you for your lifestyle. Well, why would you come to Ghana and, and show these sis these young sisters how to create this type of lifestyle? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. My daughter say I'm a square, you know, or whatever. <laughs> maybe, maybe so. Okay, I accept that. Mm. But for me, you know, and you talking about nation building, where do that fit in at? I understand we all got to make friends and you know uh network and all it is but what are you bringing to the table when you are sitting here showing the younger sisters how to prostitute themselves mm -hmm. what are you saying when you have people doing labor for you and you don't pay them what are you saying and then you sit on twitter and say oh they sold us into slavery no you sold yourself i keep saying that you sold yourself we sold ourselves and some of us are still selling ourselves i set myself apart from it i i'm not i hate to say like i'm righteous and perfect but come on man it some of this better. stuff some of this mm. stuff is foolishness and if we had organization and some group projects to, to speak of on our behalf that would help yeah. why just bring bullshit? Yeah. where's the positive that yeah. you're adding then you standing up to the parliament like you need to put some legislation in for the repass for what how you how for what what impact have you brought you, in how have you, you know what i'm saying oh we spent all this money doing a year of return doing what debauchery is that something Drinking, to really stand on spending on hotel the whole trajectory of our life for people who live here changed after the year return now all the police think we're all potheads yep Mm. All the women are available for anything. Mm. Mm. That's where some of that came from. And I'm sure that's what's causing the assault issues. That's where some of that came from. And we had nothing community-wise as repass to push back against that. And we are suffering because of it right now.
I'm wow. not joking at all. I, I have to say that. Wow. Look, let me tell you something. And this is this is where we're losing. And we could possibly win. Instead of us coming here and taking advantage in a positive way of what's being offered to us by us returning, mm -hmm. we have taken that and in fact, in many cases, made that into uh, a weapon that we use against other diasporans. Wow. So let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. Just this is, you know, this is this is the I'm determined not to become bitter. Right. But this is a bitter point. Okay. I'm working with a farming cooperative. Right. And which is this is something we ain't talked about it, mm -hmm. but I'm into the farm thing. Right. I'm into agriculture and agribusiness. Right. Mm -hmm. Um and have been since I was a youth. Right. Okay. Um I worked with farmers in America. Mm -hmm. I worked with farmers from South America, mm. from other parts of Africa. Mm. Now I'm here in Ghana. And if people don't know, here they use uh, cooperatives. Mm -hmm. The farmers, if they're smart, they're part of a cooperative. They come together. Yes. And so I too have joined a farming cooperative. Right. There. Now, they have a 6,000 acre farming community, planned farming community right. that is we're participating mm. with in Afrim Plains, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Now, Afrim Plains. Afrim right, yeah. Plains. right, you okay. got it, it's okay. fine. <laughs> so, um, with that being said, we have so many opportunities mm -hmm. to do huge, beautiful uh, projects. Mm -hmm. You can have your individual piece that is part of the collective. Right. You don't have to be twins and right. joined at the hip to right. participate. Right. Where are the participants at? Can we even have 20 of them? We're not doing any of the activities that would lead us to the place that we want to be. Mm. Just we all have individual building projects. That's all that's ever going to be mm. is an individual building project. Mm. But if you want structure, if you want organization, if you want protection, then we have to be working together. It's nothing that I've done here that has shown me that we are serious about that. And we can point to Ghanaians that, or oh, they're not unified. We can make every excuse in the world, every excuse in the world, and it doesn't add up mm. because here we have every opportunity. There is no glass ceiling here, racism, Colonialism and neo-colonialism yeah. is a factor. Right. I think that we're going to deal with that with these individual building mm -hmm. projects. Mm -hmm. You are mistaken. Right. And that's what we're doing. That's all we're doing. And that is why we have no protection. Mm. I can name you. I have, a, like I told you about, a 96-ton food processing facility, 96-ton capacity mm. uh, food processing mm. facility that I'm building right now with the cooperative. Mm. And I can count on one hand mm. how many of the diasporans have linked into this project but and we think we can protect our daughters no. can we do it like that we are not ashanti we're not god we're not right. we're not anyway we have returned we have to get in where we fit in but in that process, we still should have our mind on what it takes to protect ourselves. Yeah. And we're focused on all the wrong things. Right. You got people over here running freak operations. You got people over here dealing in drugs. You got people over here doing a lot of very stupid things that don't add up to any of the things that we need to keep our families safe here. And so for those of us like me who have brought their families here, that's serious. I'm not joking. Do it seem like it's joking? No. So, that's that's in a nutshell. Well, um. <laughs> and, and you know what? Well, I'm wondering who. Okay, between the Nans and the diaspora, who do we think is coming to save us from this foolishness? If we don't save ourselves, ain't nobody coming. Who is gonna help us? Do you think of IMF money, no. or maybe some Chinese mm -hmm. loan money, mm -hmm. or maybe some uh, mm -hmm. ECOWAS is gonna come down? Who's going to help us? Nobody. 
I don't know who people think is responsible for that food. I don't know, but we are not taking responsibility. And I got to say, I resent it. <laughs> I, you know, I resent that. And to me, even though it seems like it's different from assault cases, it's not. When you have a structure, people know how to act. When you have a structure, your youth don't disrespect you in the street. Look what we just encountered, a 20-year-old. Why are you? I've never seen anything like that in my life. I'm not his mother, but I took it the same way. How dare you talk to me like that? Mm. Our youth can't respect us. They don't listen to us. Then how will you protect your youth from that youth? What are some of the structures or what are some of the solutions that you think should be put in place mm -hmm. to help us build and grow as a people so that all these things that are happening can be prevented? I, I would love to see us uh, have a committed group of elders mm -hmm. and advisors mm -hmm. that we all can agree uh, to respect their decisions. Mm -hmm. Let them host any type of mediations, let them host any events or um, educational workshops, mm -hmm. cultural acculturation workshops. Um, we need all of that. Right. We need it desperately. Mm -hmm. We should even start getting to the point where people are not coming here unless they go through the, that training right. or some type of acculturation. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we desperately need that. I, I would like for everybody involved in the organization, do your job. The organization exists for a reason. There's aspects to that organization that can be put to use, use them. Mm -hmm. Don't ever take a call mm -hmm. from a distraught mother over an assault that was performed on her child and say, sorry, yo, and hang up the phone. That's organizationally Wow. I have a problem with that. Mm, mm, um, so that's two things. That's two things, right. And let's let's start there. Okay. But I have more and I'm working with uh, one of the sisters who who is here um, that has a lot of background mm -hmm. and trauma mm -hmm. um, healing. Right. Um, to, to just come up with more. And I, I know for a fact I have about four things on my list and I'm mm. sure she will have some too. And we like to put all of Everything. that out there right. for consideration right. because right. I don't want this to be in vain. Mm -hmm. I don't want our suffering and our loss to be in vain. I want us to learn something. Um, I don't want to be uh, petty, mm -hmm. you know, and just be mad at the family, right. call them out by name, embarrass them internationally. I could do it's it. Not, yeah, but, but it's, it's not it right. won't mm -hmm. lead to Anything. what I really want, mm -hmm. which is safety mm -hmm. and uh, a level of community mm -hmm. for my children. Right. Which is, that's what I want. Right. So, um, all right. Thank you, sister. Thank you for being on the shift once again. Uh, thank you you viewers for staying with us uh, this is the shift and this is the second season uh, we'll be bringing you more interesting and educative conversation we freestyle it you know we have bad lighting and everything but you know we're giving you the information you need and that's the most important thing you know so um you can get the shift on youtube on the bond media and you can also get it on all the podcasts, the various podcast platforms.